change of zone public hearings and one agenda item scheduled for this evening. And we will begin with the uh, agenda item first, and that is an authorization for the supervisor to execute an amended airline use agreement with Southwest Airlines for the use of various gates. Any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second. Second by Councilman Mullen. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Okay, now we will go on to our first scheduled public hearing, TC 5379, Bola EM Realty, LLC. And I'd ask the town clerk, Olga Murray, to please read the hearing notice. TC 5379. Notice is hereby given that the town of board of the town of Isla will hold an in-person public meeting on November 18th at 2021 at 5 p.m. at Town Hall, 655 Main Street, on the application of BOLA, EM Realty. Applicant requests a modification of covenants and restrictions associated with TC 1931, along with a planning board special permit for a convenience market in the Business 3 District, pursuant to code 68-302.1D. Site plan modifications may be required as part of this application. The environmental impacts will be assessed on this property located in the Bayshore School District, located on the southeast corner of Bayshore Road, County Route 57, and Manor Lane, Bayshore, 236 Bayshore Road, Town of Islip, Suffolk County, New York, Town Board, Town of Islip, Olga Murray, Town Clerk. Thank you. Um, if the applicant is prepared, you may begin. Thank you, Madam Supervisor, fellow board members. For the applicant, David Alton, from the law office of Brown, Alton, and Leo, 538 Broad Hollow Road, Suite 301W, Melville, New York. <clears throat> For the applicant, Bola, the property, as mentioned, is 236 Day Shore Road, is an Amlet Day Shore, New York. It bears Suffolk County tax map number district 500, section 38. Block 2, Block 9. It's located at the southeast quadrant of the intersection of Bayshore Road and Manor Lane. Property is currently zoned B3. Zoning, and just a little, a little history on the site, which I think is germane to the tonight's hearing. The uh, property received a zone change by Town Board Resolution on December 4th of 69, EC number 1931. Granting the zone change to residence A to business three. In connection with those uh, that zone change application, the declaration of CNRs was filed by the then applicant, the owner of record, um, May 28th of 1970. Those CNRs were recorded in the library 6773, page 482. In this pertinent part, uh, the CNRs have uh, presently require uh, or permit the retail sale of gas, oil, and allied products, no automotive repairs. I'll note for the record, this application does not contemplate automotive repairs, no repair bays of any kind. Uh, the application will provide two curb cuts on Bayshore Road and two curb cuts on Manor Lane, no curb cuts on Howell Road. There was a minor amendment to the CNRs on January 29th of 71. And that was reported uh, in, on the uh, 28th day of, of May 1970 in Library 7126, page 558. Uh, that modification was not really the hearing. Following the CFO was issued by the town, CFO number 876014 on January 23rd of 71 for a gasoline service station. That station operated for the better part of 10 years uh, and went underwent its first renovation following a Board of Appeals decision for the purpose of rebuilding the station. The CMO was issued on the uh, 22nd day of October of 80, uh, and that's CMO number is 497326 for the one story concrete building and the uh, six MPDs. Subsequent CMCs were issued on the same day for the Pump Island Canopy and the Pump Island Kiosk as well as the underground petroleum storage tanks. Subsequent renovations were done to the station in the early 2000s, but the station itself has not been updated since that time. 
the existing development, just exist a little bit about the existing development and some of the site dimensions. The site itself is 33,057 square feet or 0.75 acres in area. It has a frontage on Bay Shore Road of approximately 200 feet and on Manor Road of 155 feet, as well as on Howells Road of 215 feet. The existing uh, concrete, one story concrete building is approximately 440 square feet or 14 by 32. There are currently five multi product fuel dispensers on site, providing 10 fueling positions. There is a Pump Island canopy on site. Which, runs, which presently is parallel to Bayshore Road. That canopy is approximately 3,200 square feet in area. There is a trash enclosure on the site, which presently is along the eastern lot line of the premises. Uh, there is a freestanding ID Christ sign uh, and brand sign also at the northeast corner of the premises. Uh, I'll note that there are currently three curb cuts on Bayshore Road, two on Manor Lane, as I mentioned previously, not on Howell Road. And there is a six foot uh, solid white PVC fence that runs along the eastern lot line of the site. And then partial let's say roughly halfway, two thirds of the way along the southern lot line of the site. The applicant proposes to raise and rebuild the existing improvements and put in place instead of a new gas and service station with an accessory convenience store. The proposed convenience store will be situated on the eastern portion of the site. It'll be approximately 200. 22,545 square feet in area. It will be set back in consistent with the 25 foot setback to the east lot line. And in terms of the existing trash enclosure, which is currently there, that will be relocated and rebuilt uh, on the southern lot line along Howell Road. With the building on the east side of the uh, premises, it will provide additional buffering to the single family residents to the east. Uh, Step back from the building's south side of the property line will be 20 feet to get consistent with code requirement. There will be a new canopy uh, installed from the midway uh, of the site, uh, which will be perpendicular this time to Bayshore Road or parallel to the manor, approximately uh, 82 by 32 or 2624 square feet. There will be six multi product fuel dispensers on the canopy island. Uh, again, running uh, perpendicular to uh, Bayshore Road, providing 12 fueling positions. With regard to the curb cuts on Bayshore Road, there is going to be a consolidation which will certainly make the site a little safer and provide for better egress to egress the easternmost curb cut, which is proximate to the northeast corner of the site and to the state's presence. The east will be closed. That curb cut will be uh, relocated uh, and uh, Consolidated with the middle curb cut on the site, providing for two curb cuts instead of three. The curb cuts, in terms of access, will be right in, and that will be uh, the right in will be the uh, westernmost curb cut, and the and right out will be the easternmost curb cut. In terms of curb cuts on Manor Road, there are currently two: one on the north end of the property, one on the south. The north end, closest to the intersection of Manor and Bayshore Road, will be closed. There will be only Southerly curb cut remain that will remain a full movement curb cut. So, reducing the number of turning movements on site onto the local roadway. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the dumpster enclosure will be relocated from the eastern portion of the premises and will be built along the southern property line <clears throat> proximate to the new convenience store. It will be a masonry trash enclosure, and the architecture of that enclosure will be consistent with the uh, new convenience store building. Uh, the site plan currently provides for 18 parking stalls. Uh, I believe 26 of them, not mistaken, are required. Uh, I'll note in reviewing the proposed uh, covenants and restrictions that were uh, recently provided by the planning department. Planning uh, recommends that 15 parking spaces be provided on site. So, of the 18 that the applicant is currently proposing, three more would be land banked uh, based upon. The uh, draft CNR is provided, which the applicant is amenable to, which will provide additional green space on the site. The, and, and I, uh, if you recall, I mentioned that there is currently an existing freestanding site at the northeast corner of the premises, uh, approximately to the uh, eastern lot line and the residents to the east. 
uh, that freestanding sign has price and brand on it. That sign's going to come down. And we are going to put in a brand new monument style sign, uh, approximately eight feet in height, 40 square feet in area, which monument signs will be located in the planting area between the two curb cuts on the shore road. So we're moving that sign away from the residence to the east. Uh, vacuum pumps and air pumps will be uh, along Manor Road. In addition, on Manor Road, the applicant proposes to install supplemental planting, roughly three feet in height, and should uh, you know the planning board, the planning board is the board of site plan review decide, we would also put in a, a three foot high solid white PVC fence to further screen any illumination from headlights on the site to the residents on Manor Road. The applicant also proposes to extend the six foot solid white PVC fence on Howell Road uh, to a distance of approximately 15 feet from Manor Road, thus providing additional buffering. New uh, underground storage tanks for gas will be installed at the northwest corner of the site to 12,000 gallon tanks. And in terms of mechanicals for HVAC, they will be roof mounted as well and screened behind building parapet. There is some minor variance relief that goes with this application. Uh, the trash enclosure, as I mentioned, will be so located on the south side of the premises, where a 25 foot setback is required if the applicant is proposed 15. And as I did mention, parking uh, previously 26 spaces required. Uh, 18 will be provided, assuming, of course, uh, we ultimately land back. And as I mentioned, the applicant has no problem land banking with the additional green space. Uh, in terms of lot area, code requires 40,000 square foot lot, but as you know, the lot itself, which is the condition, is 33,057 square feet. There is no feasible way to obtain another land for large premises. It essentially is what it is in existing condition uh, on the site. And then finally, there is a minor variance sort as it relates to the western curb cut on Bayfield Road. Uh, code provides for a maximum curb cut width of 25 feet. The applicant is requesting a 30-foot curb cut uh, for purposes of uh, particularly truck access and uh, fuel delivery as well. I will note uh, with me tonight is Andrew Lowry, who's going to be engineer, and Andrew will know private traffic engineer, and he'll tell you a little bit more about the traffic impact for the site. But one thing I want to mention, folks, is that this application has been uh, vetted in part with uh, Suffolk County DPW, with Bayshore Road being a county road. And DPW has thus far has been comfortable with the project uh, and site access management plan. Uh, that has also been reviewed by the town's independent traffic consultant on Payment Plain, uh, and they have found that acceptable as well. With regard to the character of the area, this site is a bit unique in that uh, it, it is uh, surrounded on pretty much four sides uh, by residential development. However, this is an existing gas station and has been such for the better part of 50 years. Um, so uh, there is one small business use on the north side of Bay Shore Road directly across from the site, which is a dentist's office. But in part, we have single family residents that uh, are to the north, south, east, and west of the site. Um, the use that's there right now and for the past 50 plus years has been a 24 7 use. One of the things the applicant is proposing and is, uh, has discussed with planning uh, is to uh, limit the hours of operation. The site will be closed from uh, 11 p.m., I believe, to 5 a.m. So we will only be operating the site in the hours of 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. Let's say a change in condition from what's proposed today. Uh, we do have some commercial development further south and east of us, approximately 800. I will note that there is a 7-Eleven convenience store at the southeast corner of Montauk Drive and Bayshore Road. And then, of course, we have Bayshore Inn at the southeast corner of Bayshore Road and Muncie Road. Um, that, in, in sum, would conclude my presentation as it relates to the application. At this time, I'm going to ask Project Civil Engineer Chris Tartaglia to step up to Chris if you want to get a little more detailed in terms of the site plan application and stuff. Uh, just one comment, Mr. Altman. You keep referring to it as Manor Road. It's actually Manor Lane. Okay. Thank you. I have four chairs. 
here to my left uh, that I'm going to be referring to, but I also have to give handouts. Perfect. Please. You may begin. Deciduous 
Uh, you see, we have the use of them without the leave, but the uh, proposed springtime or summertime condition, there's uh, a tremendous difference in the aesthetic. What I feel is the most important point um, that I want to make is actually speaking to the last page of the handout. Which is the so what this proposes, uh, what this shows, is the before and after of uh, the view um, from Howell Road. This is obviously particularly sensitive because this is where the dominance of the uh, neighborhood and residents are located. What you see in the top. Um, seen here is what David mentioned that, and we're not sure why, but the PPC fence that was installed, I'm not sure how many years ago, sort of stopped halfway along that roadway front. We're not sure why there's no access onto this street, there's certainly no access proposed. What you see in the view below um, is superimposing those trees again with their, with their leaves on them, but also with the extension of that fence more towards the corner. Uh, we believe that that feature in and of itself is going to provide a significant amount of more buffering as compared with the existing facility. Right now, those pump islands are oriented north-south, and the headlights from those pump islands would shine directly across um, that lack of fence area into the residences to the south. Um, as David mentioned, we're reoriented those pumps to head in an east-west direction, but the inclusion of this fence along that southerly line will provide a substantial amount of additional buffering and, and uh, for light and, and noise, of course, um, from the property. Uh, a little bit hard to see, but directly north of that fence, since, since we've got this mature, this mature grove of trees right along the sidewalk there, um, we really can't do a lot with planting and be successful with planting any more. Um, trees or bushes on that side simply because the trees, uh, the shade from those trees will preclude them from growing. So what we're proposing is on the north side of that fence, um, and this is going back to the second page of the handout, which is a pure, we're going to propose a uh, vigorous line of evergreen plantings along that particular fence line. And, and those evergreens are shown in the various views that we provided both from the tree renderings. Um, and on the uh, on the site plan order, but we're, we're those will be again that six to eight feet at time of planting, and um, I think we're going to install a layer of cypress there, which the board is familiar with. It. Those will be probably in the twenty-five to thirty foot range, in relatively short order, short order meaning five to seven years. They grow like hotcakes, um, and will provide an even better buffer uh, to. The residences to the south. Um, so, as I said, this is all done a great job of describing the site plan. Uh, I don't want to read too much of what we said, but I do just want to talk about the five points, and I'm certainly available for any questions that the board may have. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions for the applicant at this point, or we'll just go to the department? I, I just have one quick question. So do sure. I. Um, going to the last uh, rendering, the before and after view. Um, you spoke specifically as it relates to the white PVC fence. And you indicated that the fence that, that will be in the after view will extend as down Howells Road as close to Manor Lane as, as you can come. Yes, sir. And, and you'll see in the before view, I'm going to be kind as, or as kind as I can and try and also be accurate. The white PVC fence that is there existing is a little bit tired. So you're going to replace with new white PVC fence. Got it. Okay. So moving forward to the first before and after rendering that we see, you'll see on the top, as you're proceeding on Bayshore Road going south, it seems to be on the top view of the before, it's obscured a little by the sign that you had mentioned or Mr. Altman had mentioned in his, his presentation, but it seems to be a matching tired white PVC fence behind what is depicted in the photograph as a white vehicle there. It seems to be probably the same fence that was installed on the other side. That will also be new white PVC fence on that side of the property as well. That's correct. Thank you. Well. Councilman Bergen? Yeah. Um, so when you're exiting the site, 
onto Bayshore Road. Is that going to be a right turn only because it's a double yellow line? Well, the double yellow line is not the two left turns. Um, or hatching or more striking would be considered a double yellow line in and of itself. That's a legal left turn. That's a legal left turn. So to answer the question, right now, the Provide those restrictions on the property. However, our discussions with them are ongoing. And the short answer to that is if DPW requests any other access restrictions on this road, the applicant will absolutely agree with them on that. Okay, so you're waiting on that. And are you also waiting for um, forthcoming traffic study comments? Are we still waiting on those? I think I think no. Or we could just hear from our department if he can answer. Sean could probably answer it. Thanks. Thank All right, Sean, do you want to come forward? Um, so I guess briefly just to touch upon the traffic, the traffic impact analysis that the applicant submitted was reviewed by the town's new planning consultant. Uh, they found no safety issues and just recommended the closing of the curb that nearest the intersection on Manor Lane, which the applicant agreed to do. So no objections raised by the traffic consultant uh, from a traffic safety standpoint. Uh, that being said, um, there's not much more to elaborate. More so than what the EF has already said, he's covered everything, but they're providing all the additional plantings and they're agreeing to MPR as operation for the convenience market and the gas station. Okay. Uh, and that's all part of a settlement uh, agreed to with the planning board. So that's the case of the application. That's a pretty good job. Thank you. All right, uh, we have a number I of- have one question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sure. Sorry. It, was, it was represented, I think, by the applicant that uh, the, there was an agreement between the planning board uh, and the planning department and the applicant as it relates to the hours of operation. You want me? Yeah. I can take that. Yeah, please. I mean, so it, it, there was a- it, 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 it's, it's not exactly, in my mind, it's not exactly as accurate as the information that we've been presented in terms of our backup information. In fact, there was a lawsuit and the town's position, at least that's the information yeah, that I, we have. I can, the lawsuit, is yeah. that correct? Yeah, there was, a, there was a, an initial planning board hearing. Uh, the planning board decision um, basically denied the application based upon the covenant that there was uh, to be no sale of uh, anything at the property except for gas oil or allied products. Um, at that time, the applicant was not willing to um, uh, modify the hours of operation. They wanted to be 24 seven. Uh, they brought in article 78, it was dismissed. Uh, subsequently, there was an appeal. Uh, at that time, they agreed to modify the hours of operation to limit it to 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, the planning board was okay with that. Um, so basically we settled the, they withdrew the appeal um, and we put them right back into the process where they would have been had they agreed to uh, limit the hours of operation at the initial planning board hearing. Thank you. That was good. Okay. All right, uh, why don't we move to uh, the public comments because I'm sure there'll be opportunity then for you to address them. Um, Is this the brief? Is this the brief traffic report? Yeah, it's fairly brief. Okay, go ahead. It's fairly brief. Because I, I, I do want to hear from the speakers. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 23rd, 2018, the Alabama Planning Associates concluded that 
the prior submissions have satisfactorily addressed all practical concerns. I want to point that out. In addition to that, the plaintiff's associates, we have also been coordinating with the Suffolk County Department of Public Works to retain jurisdiction over Bayshore Road. Uh, we have been consulting with the DPW and they are on board with the access plan. What's important to keep in mind with this application is what presently exists on this site. There is a gas station with 10 vehicle fueling positions. There is a small uh, kiosk that offers uh, some type of inconvenience goods. And what's important to keep in mind is that when you have the application before you, it's important to think about the net increase in traffic that already occurs. There's vehicles that are going to this gas station today. Uh, there'll be vehicles going to the gas station tomorrow. And what the application proposes is to add an amenity that's commonly found with gas stations and a convenience store. Um, you know, and when you combine these two uses, you see a certain type of traffic that goes with them. For example, on my way to this meeting tonight, the light came on in my car that said I needed to get gas. I was on the way here. I pulled into a gas station. I fueled up. I kept going in the direction that I was going. I was already on the road on the way here. So I stopped at the gas station. I got gas. But I'm not an extra vehicle that's added to the subject group of network. That's what's referred to as the concept of pass-by traffic. You see that the majority of the time with gas stations and convenience stores. People really aren't going out of their way to go there. They're on Bayshore Road. They pull in, they get gas, and they keep going. So studies indicate that 75% uh, of traffic that goes to the gas station convenience stores is already on the road right now. So three out of every four cars, it's already on the road. The net increase in traffic is that, that one out of every four cars is, is, is minimal. We've also had the opportunity to work with Bola over the years and study how their sites operate. We've done many observations and at, at existing Bola markets just to see who's coming to these sites and, and what are they doing. Are they getting gas? Are they getting gas and then they walk into the store? Or are they going just for the convenience store? Because the idea here is that we're adding a convenience store. What is the traffic impact to adding a convenience store? Our observations indicate time and time again, 65% of traffic that goes to Bola markets is going for gas only. The next 20% of what we're using is getting gas, and then they're going into the store to make some type of transactions, buy a bottle of water, buy a cup of coffee. That last 15% of traffic is customers that are only going to the convenience store. 15%, it's a very small number. The idea here is that the gas station already exists. We're proposing a similar, much improved gas station and then adding the amenity of the convenience store. So the amount of added traffic that we're accounting for is that 15% increase. Now what, is, what does 15% mean uh, in terms of vehicles? Vehicles in an hour? We're estimating that there'd be an additional 20 to 30 vehicles in an hour that's generated by this development. That's also not a very big number. 20 to 30 vehicles over an hour is about a vehicle every three minutes, every two minutes. Um, you wouldn't really notice it based on the fact that there's already a gas station generating traffic to and from the site. 20 to 30 vehicles, what else does that equate to? You know, there's, road, there's vehicles on Bayshore Road, on Manor Lane. Um, driving to and from wherever they may need to. Uh, on, day, on a daily average, there are 33,000 vehicles that go through that intersection. And we're talking about maybe 20 or 30 extra vehicles in the busiest time during one hour. It's gonna be less than a 1% change what's already out there. First and foremost, because of the fact that it's already a gas station and also the fact of the pass by traffic. People are already on the road, they need gas, they pull in, they pull out. <laughs> Just to conclude, there's a minor increase in traffic that's associated with the project. We think that there's a huge upside to this by bringing a beautiful project to what's currently not the greatest looking site. Uh, so we hope that the board sees uh, the opportunity here to have a beautiful goal at this location. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let us go now to uh, the cards. We have a number of speakers. Uh, just to remind everyone, you have three minutes. Uh, to make your comments, I would just ask if your comments really repeat what's already been said, if you could just indicate that so we can get through these. Um, the first speaker is Ellen Greenspan.
the most important thing I have been to attend is the state um, after planning board meeting in 2002, I knew when Mr. Walton knew he was going to return that someone was going to say, as he left the auditorium, obviously I was elated that the plan was denied over across the course of street from the gas station. Um, and he did say that he wouldn't celebrate food long we're coming back. So I got busy and I immediately uh, applied for a FOIA application. I wanted to see my own eyes how many accidents there were in the last three years up until the planning board meeting. And uh, I sent it to the Suffolk County Police Department. And I counted, I did uh, email everything to the town clerk's office, the amount of accidents on Bayshore Road in Manor Lane. There are 160 accidents, many injuries um, in a three year period. Um, I also, they also sent me a stack, I'm going to say it's about this thick, of the actual drawings of the accidents, the actual accident reports. I didn't bring that, but I did drop that, that packet off at the town clerk's office. Um, I have been witness to many of the accidents. It's very disturbing, it's disruptive to our street because when there are accidents on Facial Road, and there are many serious ones, they have to stop the traffic and re-channel it down Howard's to get them to the traffic traffic flowing. Um, so I can't understand how whatever the traffic engineer is explaining to help us, whether it's 30 cars an hour or three cars an hour. This is an extremely dangerous location right now. The second thing I did was I found out at different bull markets in Suffolk County, um, the robberies. Now they want to change the hours from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. And coincidentally, I have a report of this, I have several reports of robberies at bowler markets. One of them was at 5 a.m., the other one was at 11 p.m. So I'm not sure how those hours are going to help. Um, in addition, um, I think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, what's the word? Rendering. Rendering, thank you. It's a beautiful rendering. I mean, obviously, that looks beautiful. The street looks brand new. But I don't care how much window dressing you do, it's not going to help us. This, We're happy with the pain of gas station. We wish the gas station wasn't there. Absolutely. But many people have actually said to us, including the liaison from Lola, who came around to our block on Sunday night. And she said, there's already a gas station there. And I said, I know, but I, we'd all like to just leave it like that. And she said, well, why did you buy a house here? She said to me, why did you buy a house near a gas station? If you could wrap up. OK. So um, the other thing is there's three convenience stores. 7-Eleven is two-tenths of a mile away from the folks market. Um, there are two other convenience stores within three-tenths of a mile. Um, the increase in crime, I feel guaranteed there's going to be a robbery. They're going to take off. They're going to run down my street. My next door neighbor has already been approached by various people in other locations asking for money. Um, the impact on the neighborhood is just terrible. And the other last thing I want to say is that the threat of this market hanging over our heads since 2018 is very stressful. It's just, I spent, I just retired in June. Um, I worked for the Bayshore School District. And this entire week, since we only got a week's notice, I've spent every free moment getting ready for this meeting. And I would have much rather been doing other things because my neighborhood means a lot to me. I live there. I come home every night to my home. I want to feel safe. And okay. I feel that this doesn't belong at this location. Okay. God bless Mr. Singh, but we are not at 109 or a half step down or Route 112. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, uh, Kyle Sarapiti.
issue right now is the traffic. I think that for anything that brings more traffic into the area is only going to add to a dangerous situation where people are going to get killed. Now, I 
That sounds terrible, but it's a fact. There's people walking down in Mattel Lane all the time. It's a short eight house on either side, roughly, well manicured, taken care of, and yet we pick up garbage already every day. I'm adjacent on an angle. So the, I have eight foot hedges blocking the lights. I have 10 foot hedges on the other side for my neighbor, Kyle, that we keep manicured to cut down on the noise. That's just from the gas station. I've lived there for 35 years, and now you're gonna add 20 more or 18 more uh, spots for people to loiter and to come and hang out. The music, the noise, the motorcycles, the muscle cars, we're tired. You must slow people down. I was out breaking my... I don't disagree with you about slowing people down. However, um, Bayshore Road is a is a county road, and as far as people speeding and you know, um, literally causing accidents and flouting the law with texting while driving, that really is the role of the Suffolk County Police Department. And I would hope that some of that passion you're exhibiting here tonight, you would share with the county and see if we can get better coverage. Uh, next speaker, Jennifer Beaconsall. And what I witness is the atrocious with the cars passing the buses multiple times throughout the week as the kids are exiting or entering the bus. Um, the, the state of the roads is a whole other story that we can get into, but um, the amount of traffic that comes up and down on the road is absurd. And to add 20 to 30 an hour more possibly coming up and down on block is a real concern. Um, I know they're proposing to keep the curb cuts on Manor Lane, but 
I would ask that they actually close off the Mallow Lane exit and entrance. Um, it just invites more people down Mallow Lane. And, um, you know, if we could cut that down, is that all possible? We have tractor trailers, like I mentioned, going out to that Target shopping center, which has grown exponentially since they put in the super target. Um, just the amount of trucks coming down the road is, is really, it's disruptive. So um, I wanted to at least propose that. Um, and I don't know if any of the traffic studies includes information from the school district about the school cameras, now that they have those to capture what actually occurs with the drivers when the students are being picked up and dropped off. It's, I have to go out there to make sure that my son can cross the road. It's, it's there. So, Thank you. Teresa Edwin. <laughs> As a matter of fact, face, if you can also face the reporter, she's making this all okay. down. <laughs> um, whether we live in mansions or modest homes, we all have the right to get paid. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I want to read off a few statistics that have not been brought up. Uh, the first one is from the FBI's National Institute of Citizen Data Reporting System. These statistics were recently in 2020, and it ranked convenience stores, also known as speed stores, as the fourth most common location for violent crime. 10% of robberies nationwide occur at speed stores. Now, somebody else mentioned the Bay Shore Inn. I live on Howell Road in between the gas station and that motel. Today, at 1.20 p.m., we had some guy walking up the street with what appeared to be a prostitute following him, screaming expletives, F you, I want my effing money, on our quiet little dead end street. This goes on all the time, all the time. And a lot of times, they go, if they just need some cigarettes or something to drink, they will go up our road to the gas station. Rather than cross Bayshore Road, and go to the seven Once that C score is in place, you know who a lot of your customers, your clients' customers are going to be? These people from this motel, prostitutes, criminals, drug addicts that come up and down our block, they cross over the little dead end, and that's where they go. Screaming that she's the other guy, the next door neighbor was a young child, and this is what you can hear it. Windows and doors closed, you can hear this. And speaking of noise, other people have mentioned we talking about traffic, making it sound like these are lovely people and quiet little Mercedes that are going to be pulling you to this this tea store, you know, for a cappuccino. That's not the experience we've had without the tea store in there. What we hear are lot of thudding subwoofers. I've been there for six years. I can't open my window on a beautiful night. Everything is shut, closed. And um, Supervisor Carpenter has heard from me a lot about this issue um, between fireworks and now with these illegally modified vehicles. These people are going to be hanging out. Your client, your clients, customers are going to be coming from this motel. They're going to be cutting through our street, and they're going to be these people who are going to use your, um, you know, with these nightclubs on wheels. Are going to be using this gas station, this convenience store. If you wrap up. And bless their music and do whatever they do with their straight pipes and everything else. So it's a big concern. And um, I really feel, I, I would like the board, I would like you all to ask yourself um, if, if this was you, if this was your house, and why should we move? My, my husband is retired in my PD. Um, Fireworks are a whole other issue. He was at the doctor day at two days after day after Thanksgiving last year because he got his ears blown. If you could wrap up. Okay. All right. Well, well, that's pretty.
pretty much it. Just okay. Thank you. I have a question for you. When that incident happened at one o'clock this afternoon, were the police called? Were the police called? Okay. Okay. I have a neighbor alerted me to it. She, we work, people work from home. We don't have time. We spend our whole life fighting and fighting. I spent a year and a half writing letters to you, writing letters to all kinds of decisions. Because um, we had our, our, our senator's wife. Okay. So I guess you don't want to answer the question. I guess the police were not called. But if your neighbor calls you, she should be calling the police. Well, they have to. Well, that's can, inexcusable. Can I, can I ask a question? Certainly. Real quickly, and it's really more directed at Madam Clerk. Um, we received three emails today that you forwarded to us as a board, including um, Ms. Edwins, where she went four pages through these statistics. Very, very helpful. You spent a lot of time on it, I can tell. Can, can these or are these made part of the public record? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So we have your email, we have Ms. Um, Greenspan's email, and we have Mr. Clement's email, which was forwarded to us today. And I just and want to say that everything is directed to Suffolk County TV. We are still having these issues. So I know that the buck is passed right along to them, but how many times are we supposed to call 911? And there's no, there's never a resolution. But like I said, my husband protected people for 20, 23 years of his life as a New York City police homicide detective. And prior to that, narcotics undercover. And we would like to live in peace. We don't want this. We just want to live in peace. And I don't want to spend all my time doing this. Thank you. Can understand. Uh, Michael Lamarada. automobile noise, loud radio playing, and traffic from the gas station and Bayshore Road is already affecting my enjoyment of my backyard and my home. It wakes me up at night and early mornings. The owning this home and the mobile gas stations dump the pickups wake us up between 4.30 and 5.30 every Monday. <coughs> we are constantly finding refuge in the front and backyards of the gas station, including but not limited to candy wrappers, cigarettes, food bags, boxes, surgical masks, and drink containers. I have a six-foot fence on my property line. Parallel to Bayshore Road, this fence is about three to four feet below grade of Bayshore Road sidewalk in some places, which allows us to start trash from probably mobile and other places uh, to blow into my mobile into my yard and allows us to do people walking by. Uh, Bola market with its increased food selection will make more garbage in these larger dumpsters. This could equate to more waste than food being disposed of. Rotting food smells, especially during hot summer months, I want to sit in my backyard. Uh, more frequent noise producing dumpster pickups, the possibility of vermin, the virus, sir, sir, and more slow, sir, sir, below. There's, there's a recorder taking the sample. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm excited. Please, no, I, I, I understand more. But just please let, let the record okay. keep up, please. I, I apologize. <laughs> and uh, more garbage being blown in my yard. Thank you. Uh, in the four miles from Deer Park Avenue to Sunrise Highway, there are four 7-Elevens, a bowl and a shell, which already have a bowl, uh, which already have a bowl of convenience store. 76 uh, gas station with a walking convenience store, which is about uh, right by the uh, Bayshore Motel, uh, Dairy City, and uh, numerous other businesses, including delis, restaurants, and even more gas stations with convenience shopping and early morning business hours. Uh, how many convenience stores do we really need in a four mile span? Do we really need another one? I really don't think we do. Uh, we know the stores that are open 24 hours or have late night business hours can have an undesirable clientele uh, hanging out at night. And it's the wee hours of the morning, including homeless people going through dumpsters, looking for wasted food. Others who are frequently operating illegal activities during the time in which most of us are asleep or retiring for the evening. Uh, I and my neighbor down the street both had our vehicles stolen in the last year. Um, other neighbors have great camera footage of people walking the block, checking to see if the cars are locked or not. There's a lot of foot traffic stemming from the Bay Shore. Um, I believe it's Section 8 housing. Not sure, 100%. I think that is what it is. Uh, one morning while driving to work, I found and reported to the police, speaking of reporting things and instances, uh, people sleeping up against that beautiful white picket, that white fence on mobile that they want to expand. People were sleeping there, and as I was walking by, I popped my horn. They had the audacity to collect and wave to me. Um, so that was reported. 
Uh, another mention of an incident. Um, there's an overnight gentleman who works at the mobile gas station. His name is Shabbos. One night, one morning, he came, left a note on my on my door, asking if my ring camera picked up the uh, the person who uh, ostracized him and uh, tried to attack him, and he proceeded to jump over that six foot fence onto Howell's Road. Uh, just last week, in the early afternoon, a couple of unknown people were walking down the street, yelling at each other. They decided to drop their bags, run into the woods. Um, and our landscapers actually scared them off for us. Uh, that was uh, at noon on uh, Friday last week. So that's the middle of the day. I don't care what your operation hours are. There's people going to and from at all times from this the motel down, the, down that road. Uh, I currently have joint custody of my children. I bought the house because I ended up being 1.5 miles from them instead of far, far away. Uh, I know I have to wrap this up. I want to say that. Uh, the excessive automobile noise, rental cars, not quite a door system. Um, the uh, community, the community store does absolutely nothing for our community. Uh, we're going to do something positive for our community, uh, get rid of the Bayshore Motel, at least put up a sound barrier, unclimbable, unbreakable fence all the way around Hallow Road, our dead end, uh, so people can't you know, traffic through there, and all the way up Bayshore Road, past the, uh, the woods that are there, they cut through there all the time, also. Um, Michael. Property, and uh, it's still garbage. It's my responsibility to clean all of that up, I imagine. Um, Thank you, Michael. Next speaker, <clears throat> Ralph from Etta. Prior to that, I lived at Pin Game Street, Thompson Drive, behind my store there. And I do remember that gas station being closed. It wasn't always open 24 hours, as some people might think it was open. But in, in the late 70s and early 80s, it was closed for a few years. It was not open that time. I don't, I don't know the guys back for hours, maybe 9, 10, 11 o'clock, they were closed. Why I noticed is because I used to pick up a Hess truck every year. So, and I still do to this day. But uh, everybody basically covered everything I could say, except for that I did just a couple of other things. Uh, they say the traffic is maybe 1% more. I don't really think we need another convenience store. We have a bowler, I don't know if it's been recorded, that's on Howell's Road. And, and uh, I think it's Fifth Avenue, it's about a mile away. Big ball, it's a mall, it's already there. So how many how many bowls do we need in this world? There's one in West Isle, they're all over the there's enough, but that's what I'm trying to say. And like everybody else pointed out, there's enough stores, there's every time you turn around, there's another seven up enough going somewhere that's twenty-four hours. Other people have mentioned this the, the motorman, that's a nightmare, it's been a nightmare since I've been there, but we're not even talking about that tonight. So if, if they want to do anything, clean up the existing site, it's a dump. It's a dump. I walk there at night. I have I have a dog. We walk the neighborhood at night at about 10, 10 30. It, like somebody else said, there's, there's homeless people sleeping behind the dumpsters. They can come out and grab, do anything to anybody. It's it's a it's a nightmare for these people here. And I'm and I'm like I said, I'm pretty far away. I'm in the corner of Thompson and House. But I see a lot. I see what these other women say about people walking in the street, hookers or whatever you want to call them. We had the issue a few years ago where there was the house where the vagrants were living in there for, for months on Thompson Drive. It took them months to get them out. You call the cops, I'll give you a quick example with the cops. We had a car sitting across the street from my house at 1335 Thompson Drive. It was abandoned. I went out there a day or two later. I went to the to the fifth precinct. I couldn't even go in because of COVID. COVID. I couldn't even go in. I had to speak to a, a, somebody. This was about three months ago. Three, four months ago. I says it's abandoned. Well, it, it's on a public road. You can't just tow it. Call this one. Call that one. I did that. I'm retired, so I have the time. Not everybody in this room has that time. I called them. It took about three weeks to do it. And that's because other neighbors got a problem. So I don't even know if it was what I did. It took them three weeks for the town to pick up that car. So unrelated to that, 
that's all I have to say. Because basically everybody covered everything here. They want to fix this place, clean it up. It's a dump. They don't cut the grass for two or three weeks. I walk past there every day. It's a dump. Thank you, sir. Uh, next speaker, Phyllis Williams. And please address and your comments to the board, sorry, not to the applicant. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm just upset. We understand. I'm, I'm understand. a female, and I feel like I'm being intimidated. And when I bring my groceries on, home, okay, with the, um, I think the gas station pipes, it used to be a long fence, but when these kids, a couple of years, they kicked it down, they never repaired that fence. So I get everybody... And people are not, people are just sitting there. They're not getting gas. They're sitting there watching the neighborhood. The trucks just sit there. It was a truck just sitting there. And it just sits there, it sits there for hours. And I did call the police. I went to the police station about this gentleman. I have a picture of him and his plate number and everything. Nothing has been done and everything and and i feel like i'm being targeted by this gentleman in the gas station and everything i oh, excuse me i'm sorry that's all right mine's going off in five seconds anyway <laughs> I, feel, I feel i don't feel safe i don't feel safe at all and when, when they blew the leaves on my property, my property is big enough. Don't give me extra work to do. If you're going to, if you're going to, if, help me. Okay, if you could wrap okay. up. Thank you so much. And everything. And this is, people are not, I'm telling you this, people are not, they buy gas and they sit there. I, I, I see it from my side window. And, and the front. They just sit there and for hours. And I'm like, why? And and I do see all these strange people. And I have called the police when it was a call on the side. Okay, Miss Williams, you're well past your three minutes. If you could wrap up, please. About, I have called the Suffolk County Police and spoke to the lady. And she, she said, she said, well, I said, it's a suspicious call on the side of my house. What is, what is he doing? Right now. Okay, thank you so much. All right, that is uh, all of the cards. I would ask the um, applicant, you know, there are a number of issues that have been raised here tonight, and I don't even know if you're going to be able to address them all, uh, but I would ask you to come up and uh, maybe pick a few salient points and uh, address them. 
I have a question. Uh, who owns the property presently? Uh, the property is owned by uh, PMG. Is that BOLA? No, BOLA is a... Uh, okay. And right now, with the proposed uh, renovation, if it were to happen, would the same management that's in the gas station now be the same management and operators going forward after this project? sold all of the retail assets to Marathon in 2014. And at that time, that's when all the speedways were created. This station and five others in New York remained Hess. In 2017, Hess sold those to a Virginia company, the holding company was PMG. And PMG, in turn, leased it to Bola. Uh, Bola inherited the site with uh, a deal, a commission agent who was operating it as a gas only operation. And I believe we had taken it over in late 2018. Uh, subsequent to that, we uh, filed our uh, application to rebuild the site because um, a gas only site is really not sustainable for the long term future. So we had proposed making these improvements to bring it up to the standards that we like to consider best in class. And um, if, uh, if once the uh, site is rebuilt, we would operate it as a first class operation as we do all of our other sites um, with uh, several employees um, on duty at any particular time, probably three or four would be the typical staff. Uh, right now, as a gas only site, I believe there's only one uh, station in Hesse. Uh, while I'm here, just to address a couple of points briefly, um, you know, uh, all the uh, upgraded sites have full uh, security cameras, uh, at a minimum of 16 and as many as 36, uh, all reporting of 24-7, all backed up usually for a month uh, for security purposes. And we also use uh, Brink's smart safe technology. These are highly tamper-proof that resistant uh, safes, which uh, deter uh, you know, crime and um, Is there security cameras at the site now? Uh, now, I'm, I'm not sure what the current uh, camera no. situation is. Uh, I don't know offhand. Okay. Um, again, because we inherited the site with commission operation, uh, it hasn't been fully upgraded. Uh, we typically you know, make, do maintain cameras, but I don't know what's functional right now. And I can assure you that uh, to the extent that uh, trash or refuse uh, were ever an issue, uh, the site would be exceedingly well maintained like, like our other properties. Um, and, and, and in addition, to the extent that I don't know what the hours of operation of trash collection uh, are, but certainly if uh, they were uh, too early uh, for the, the community, we could uh, adjust them. It's already in the code as far as the hours of trash collection. Mm -hmm. It would be our intention to run this as a first-rate operation um, and uh, certainly uh, endeavor to minimize uh, much of the abuse that we're raised on the community. Okay. I just, uh, yeah, I just want to open it up if there are any comments uh, or questions by the board. I just had one question really more directed at Mr. Altman. Um, you you do this for a living, so you speak this speak, but there are people here tonight who yes, they're only here for the first time. Now we sit up here month after month and we hear this stuff, and so it's the speak that we've come become accustomed to, but maybe they don't understand it as well. So it's occasionally good, I think, to sometimes help them and educate them. CNRs, covenants and restrictions, runs with every single application. In fact, as part of your application tonight, on line two, it says applicant requests mod modifications of covenants and restrictions associated with the previous town board resolution 
from, from this board, obviously not us, but others who sat here back in 1969 as you went through the history of it. So covenants <coughs> and restrictions, they're a document that you agree to with our planning department and you sign and you certify that you're going to abide by those as the applicant. And, and those covenants and restrictions, they run with the land. So if the operator becomes not BOLA, but Hess or whoever, two years from now, if they want to make a change to those covenants and restrictions, like you're doing tonight, you have to come back here and ask for changes to those covenants and restrictions, which we require a whole nother public hearing notice, a whole nother hearing for these neighbors to express their concerns. And it, I'm, I'm specifically addressing Mr. Lamarada's concern that I know they're agreeing tonight to uh, uh, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., but we know that's just going to be worn away. In fact, if those are parts of your covenants and restrictions, that can't be worn away. You would have to come back to this board and, and ask for a reduction or a relaxation of the existing covenants and restrictions. Those hours of operation would be locked in stone and would run with the land, no matter who the owner of the property was. I understand it. I understand it, and you understand it. But these folks come here uh, on their own time, and they don't quite understand it. And we have an obligation, I think, to explain it. I, I appreciate that. I agree with you 100%, and you are correct. To the extent uh, that is part of the covenant that we are in agreement with you, yeah. if uh, Bola or anybody else in the future were to come in and seek to change those hours, you got to come conclude whether it's Bola or somebody else. We have to come back in front of you and make applications. Thank you. Yes, you're 100% correct. You know, when we were in front of the planning board a few years ago, there was a, a lot of talk uh, from the residents, and, and we heard them. We understand we're not uh, asympathetic. Actually, they're very sympathetic. We are. We are sympathetic, and we are would love to be of assistance in that. We heard a lot about the day shore and, and the problems that come from the day shore and the vagrancy, and apparently. A lot of other unsavory things that come from the nation. Um, all that is prepared and, and, and wishes to make a substantial investment in this community. The stage is built. We're looking at roughly today about a five billion dollar investment. I would say in redeveloping the site. That's not insubstantial. That is very substantial. Take down that What about the sidewalk? Please, I I would ask that you not shout out. That really doesn't help anything. Go ahead. Just a minute. Business model and it is recognized and, and, and that law it is such. So look, you know, uh, in terms of folks uh, coming out of the base story and coming to Powell's through that dead end court, I we get it. We we've heard it. We've heard it. We've seen it ourselves. We stand ready to assist in any reasonable manner that the town can look to us to provide assistance, whether it's contributions or some type of fencing or otherwise. Bull is willing to do that. Mr. Altman, if if I could, there was some. Um, I think it was uh, Mrs. Um, Beaconswall who asked about closing off Manor Lane. Um, I don't know if that's practical, doable, and if that would still meet with traffic concerns. But I would ask that that be something that be explored uh, before. We entertain anything further. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but. Well, I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot and ask you to answer it tonight because I think it's a little bit more complicated to whether or not it meets traffic standards. But there have been a lot of uh, questions and concerns raised tonight. Uh, security, picking up the garbage, the lighting, and I know some of it is addressed with the codes, but I don't know 
that we really have a definitive uh, comfort level with a lot of it. And I really would like to know more about the operator. You know, if there is going to be a commitment to really be a first class operation, you can stand here and say it now, but these are the people that have to live with it 24 7. So, um, okay. I, I agree with the supervisor. I think we've heard a lot tonight. I, I would propose a motion, may I? Absolutely. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Yeah, you know, if, I, if I might, I just have one, like, one sure. further submission, which essentially is everybody's uh, CV, is, and uh, there is a real estate report for president. You would like to okay. submit those so as, as to the clerk. exhibits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Councilman O'Connor, you have a motion? Yeah, I make a motion to close the public hearing and reserve decision on the application. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, we have closed the public hearing. Decision is reserved. You guys have a lot of homework to do. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please read the next hearing notice. Yes. Um, hearing TC 5380, Dennis Weaver has been adjourned this evening. Uh, next hearing will be TC 5381, 1840, Sunrise Highway, LLC. Uh, applicant requests a change of zone from Recreation Service G to Business 3, a modification of covenants and restrictions associated with TC 5301, and a town board special permit for a vehicle dealership with accessory vehicle repair shop pursuant to section 16-302 subdivision F. Site plan modifications are also required as part of this application and environmental impacts will be assessed on this property located in the Bayshore School District on the southeast corner of Sunrise Highway and Brentwood Road 1840 Sunrise Highway, Town of Islip, Suffolk County, New York, Islip Town Board, Olga Murray, Town Clerk. Um, is the uh, applicant here and prepared? Let's guide your mama. I don't see him. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what is that? Uh, this one? Oh, really? Good evening, Supervisor, members of the board, for the applicant, Germano and Cahill, by G. William Germano, Jr., 4250 Veterans Highway, Colfax, New York. Also present tonight is applicant qualified traffic expert, Wayne Muller of Robinson and Wayne. Oh, Jesus Christ. Subject site is located on the southeast corner of Brentwood Road and Sunrise Highway. Uh, the building front the South Service Road. It is formerly the Bayshore Bowling Alley. I'd like to present a package of nine to fix it. This is one through nine. Can they approach? Okay. Exhibit one through eight are existing condition showing the building. Uh, the building is approximately 32,000 square feet and sits on a little over two and a half acres. Uh, we have uh, one neighbor to the east of the Lucio Roberts building, formerly the Bayshore uh, Roller. Uh, that property is currently going to business. And then, of course, we have the cemetery to the south. And no other people. Um, The subject site was previously zoned business three in the early 60s, in around 1990. So, a motion to chat panel change the zone from business three to recreation. Um, and this, there was an application in 2019 um, for a zone change to business three with a special permit for legal recreation, but that process did not go forward. So, uh, as illustrated in Exhibit 9 and the board that we have presented. Um, it's a blighted building. It's been vacant for five, at least yeah. five years. Time. And there is a little to no landscaping across the front and side, side of the building. 
Um, the user of the, of the project is Empire, Empire Auto Group. Uh, the project's focus includes the sale of pre-owned vehicles, but it is primarily going to a vehicle repair shop. Um, and the shop is service Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram vehicles. Uh, it is not open to other vehicles, and it's by a um, Empire projects that there will be approximately 45 new jobs created from the project, from administration to service techs, and that the range of compensation will be from will vary from $52,000 per year to approximately $90,000. As you can see in illustration exhibit nine, um, we are using the existing footprint of the building. Uh, the real, really the only change is we're squaring off the front of the building, which would, at the uh, suggestion of the planning department, would allow us to add parking as well. Um, I will quickly run through the site plan. And on the on the western um, edge of the property, where Brentwood Road leads to the ramp, there is a driveway that will be uh, right-in only. Pursuant to traffic safety, they have requested that it, there be no left turns allowed into the site, and that is not a problem with the applicant. Um, then it will be one way around the front of the building, and there is employee parking there approximately uh, 26 stalls and then there's customer parking in the front of the building 39 stalls and inventory parking 35 stalls and then access into the service station is on the east side of the building there's a six car queue inside the building and there are 30 uh, auto uh, repair bins there's also the existing um, curb cuts at the um, northeast corner of the site uh, on the Sunrise Highway. Uh, we are proposing landscaping uh, along the front and sides of the building, and we are adding uh, these uh, trees throughout. And the purpose of adding trees throughout, uh, and not just to comply with our landscaping obligations, but is to try to deter uh, the auto, uh, the, the dealership from utilizing landscaping as a place to park uh, inventory. Uh, we are seeking um, uh, part, a 14% parking relaxation, but as I indicated, there the inside of the building can hold 30 vehicles in the base, plus an additional six in the queue. And unless the board has any questions for me about the general site, I do have Mr. Muller here. If the board has any questions about site circulation for traffic. And I will add one point. Uh, as part of the covenants and restrictions, we've agreed that there will be no tractor trailers delivering vehicles, uh, new inventory to the site. They will either be driven there um, one at a time, or the uh, truck turning template illustrates a, a smaller 40 foot flatbed truck that can carry one or two vehicles at a time. Okay. Um, your presentation was pretty thorough. Does anyone have any questions at this point uh, or for the traffic engineer? Because if not, let's hear from the department. Great. Excellent. Just one quick question of Sean. So you mentioned, um, I'm sorry, may I? Sure. You mentioned uh, one of your concerns 
is a control of inventory and the applicant went through the color coded spots, the employee parking, the customer parking in blue and the inventory in purple. We've seen, unfortunately, with other car dealerships in our township that they have too much inventory. And so I would be worried about those uh, uh, blue spaces becoming purple spaces or become blue purple spaces, depending on the hour of operation. Is there some way to uh, require it in the covenants and restrictions that the amount of, of inventory spaces be limited so that they're not taking either employee parking or customer parking to park inventory. Right now, the covenants allude to this specific site plan and we would refer to the color code. We can certainly invalidate the covenant that explicitly X number of calls, I forget what it is, um, it limits the inventory. Yeah, we can spell it out more definitively in the covenant. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Good suggestion. Any other questions or comments? Um, Anything else for the applicant? All right, I'll entertain a motion then. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing and approve this application. We have a motion. Do I have a second? And, and adopt the negative deck. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, if you would, Madam Clerk, read the next hearing notice. PC5382, Michael Suwiecki. That sorry, care of South Second Street Enterprise LLC. Uh, applicant seeks the change of zone from industrial one to industrial two in order to use the property for the outdoor, outdoor storage of construction materials. Site plan modifications are also required as part of this application. The environmental impacts will be. The property is located at the Connecticut Central School District on the south side of South 2nd Street, approximately 930 feet east of Pond Road, Ronkonkoma, counted by Suffolk County, New York, Islip Town Board, Golden Murray Town Club. Good evening, Madam Supervisor, members of the board. Uh, my attorney is Murray. My name is Janice Whalen. I'm the applicant's attorney. My office is at 23 Green Street, Huntington, New York, Street, Reserve. We respectfully request a change of zoning from I-1 to I-2 on this unequipped site, uh, site on South 2nd Street in Montauklo. The uh, property is currently vacant and it's pretty much surrounded by all I-2 uh, properties. We seek to utilize the site to store scaffolding material. Our client is a, a two-generation family-owned scaffolding business in Long Island City. This site will only be used as actually a road storage site. Most of the storage happens in Long Island City. They have a second rented site. With COVID, a lot of uh, projects were canceled, creating a need for off-site storage location. We uh, submitted uh, renderings and, and detailed complaint that we need to work out um, mutually um, agreeable conditions. Uh, just two changes that I've spoken with Sean about. One is um, we have requested a use, not a masonry um, enclosure, but rather a chain enclosure, which is just over the expense of it instead of a masonry enclosure. And secondly, one of the conditions requested is that we uh, clean out the fresh enclosure on a daily basis. We're only going to have about two truck deliveries a week, so there is kind of a complaint on site. So we have, of course, agreed to clean it up as needed. The site is going to be uh, landscaped. Um, Department indicator that they could give was a full 75 foot depth of landscaping in the front. We've complied with that and we actually exceed uh, the regulations for front yard landscaping. We are fully enclosed with chain of fencing. We anticipate the variance to the zoning board because when we purchased the site and represented the prior owners, there were many large masonry blocks left there. The cost of removing those blocks is just exorbitant. So what we plan to do is line the perimeter with those blocks and put chain link fencing on top of it. We're going to have site lighting. Um, it's going to be other. It's going to be an improvement to what exists now. As one of the conditions, and I've worked on other projects on South Second Street, the town is requiring a 10-foot road dedication, and we will be aware of that. Um, okay. We've got plenty of room for fire access and. The lumber and the metal equipment is going to be stored on an organized racking system. So it's really going to look nice. It's going to be safe and we respectfully request your approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions at this point? No. Hearing none, uh, Sean, if you would. Okay. 
And if you could particularly address the relief that they asked for from some of your conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? There are no cards, so I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to close the public hearing, issue a negative declaration, and, and approve the resolution. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Bergen. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Uh, you're welcome. Madam Clerk, next. Yes, TC 5383-711 Inc. Applicant requests a modification of covenants and restrictions associated with TC 4002 to increase the square footage of the building and a planning board special permit for a convenience market pursuant to section 68-3022 subdivision 1D. Site plan modifications are required as part of this application. The environmental impacts will also be assessed on this property located in the Hop Hog School District on the southwest corner of the LIE Interstate 495 Expressway Drive South and Wheeler Road State Route 111 Hop Hog 360, 360 Wheeler Road Town of Islip Suffolk County New York Town Board Town of Islip Olga Murray Town Clerk. Let me give it begin. Uh, good evening, Madam Secretary, members of the board, and uh, commissioners and staff. Uh, Philip Muller with the Law Firm of Bell Chris, representing the applicant Center Lab Team. Uh, I have a very short handout and pass it up to the board. Um, I know this is another gas station application, but I was asked to make my remarks brief, so I will do so. That was a, probably a very good recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I just have one question. Certainly. If there's a convenience store there presently. Um, what type of branding is that? Do you know? Uh, it's currently a ball. It is. Okay. But 7 <laughs> is, is <laughs> come full circle. <laughs> is 7 Eleven um, just rebranding the whole the whole station, including the, the pumps? Yeah. And uh, the, the existing convenience store, which is roughly in this location on the property, is being raised and replaced with the. Okay, so it, oh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, 
Sean? Okay. Any other questions or comments? No. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to close public hearing, adopt the negative declaration, and grant this application. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, TC5384. Charles Harkless and Aileen Heppernan. Applicant request seeks a modification of deed covenants and restrictions associated with TC4270 in order to lift and relocate a dwelling and associated decking. The environmental impacts will be assessed on this property and the property is located in the Beach School District on the west side of Monte Cristo Walk, approximately 120 feet south of Midway Walk, uh, Atlantique, 54 Monte Cristo Walk, Town of Islip, Suffolk County, New York, Town Board, Town Clerk, Olga Murray. Good evening. You may proceed. Yes, it did say, and relocated a dwelling and associated decking. Yes. Which are not being enforced anymore, or not, not relevant anymore. So, uh, okay. that's the request. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and really, it's just to uh, protect the house, protect all the neighbors, and also across the street on a property. Uh, you know, they had to do the same thing. Okay, thank you. We'll just hear from the department. Terrific. That's just what you wanted to hear. <laughs> Any questions or comments? None. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing, adopt the negative declaration, and to approve We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Well, motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Um, six is not on then, right? We no? stand adjourned. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.